James here from GoodGuitarist.com, and in today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to play London Calling by The Clash, and this is a super easy beginner level tune. It just has four chord shapes. The strumming's really simple. Um, in the future, if you'd like, I could also show you on electric guitar, because there are a couple cool chord voicing things that we could learn. Um, but as far as just strumming and singing along, that's what we're going to be doing in this lesson. If along the way you find any, any extra help, I have a few resources. There's my free ebook, which goes over all the basics of chords and strumming. There's my complete beginner's course, which builds on that and, you know, guides you through the whole process step by step. I also have a chord chart available for this tune on my Patreon page. So please check those out if you'd like to help support the channel. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Otherwise, we're going to get started with the chord shapes. First, we have E minor. Then we have the F chord, and we can play the full bar chord. Or if you'd like a simpler way to play it, we can play the easy F chord. And for that one, we skip the first string, put my first finger down on the first fret of the B string, middle finger on the second fret of the G string, pinky finger on the third fret of D, and then my ring finger just above that, also on the third fret. I'm gonna take my thumb and lightly touch the thickest string. There's also a G chord and a D chord. Now, if you're comfortable with those chord shapes already, I'll put a timestamp in the corner. You can skip ahead to the next section. Otherwise, we're gonna take a moment and work on the switching a little bit. So we have our E minor shape and it's followed by the F chord. Now, if we're doing the easy F shape, I think the best way to make this transition is to take these two fingers and get them on the third frets of the A and D strings, where they belong on easy F, and then put these two down. You know, so we have our E minor. We, we can kind of lift these fingers. They don't have to stay down as we do this, because that's kind of weird, but we kind of lift them a little bit and then get these two fingers down and we finish our F shape. Don't forget to get your thumb up a little bit. And I would just go through that silently a little bit just to work it out. Then we go from this easy F into G. And for that one, these two fingers, once again, they can stay together. We move them over to the highest two strings and then we finish our G shape. And you might have to move your thumb out a little bit and your elbow out a little bit to get your G shape in the right spot or else it'll be all over here and won't really sound too great. So we have our easy F. And you don't have to follow the exact way that I'm doing it. You just have to do it the same way over and over again. And that's how you build up the muscle memory. I'm just giving you some suggestions, what I think works the best with most students, but you're welcome to do it your own way as long as you're consistent. Anyways, we're gonna go from G back to E minor. And for that one, we leave our first finger down and we can finish our E minor shape. So that's a really easy one. You know, we just pivot off of our first finger, adjust a little bit to get everything in the right spot. And there's also, way later in the tune, a switch from E minor to D. So for that one, I like to focus on these two fingers and get them over there. So they spread out a little bit. My middle finger goes on the highest string. My second finger goes on the third string. And then I plug the hole with my, with my uh, ring finger as I lower my thumb a little bit. So this one has kind of the most stuff going on, right? We have our E minor chord. My thumb is lowering. I get those two fingers down where they belong on D, and then I finish up with my third finger. So work that out, all of those shapes a little bit, just to get used to it. And now we're gonna play through the verse, downstrokes only, so we can count it out and play every chord for the right amount of times. Starting out on E minor, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one. Same progression, E minor, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, one, two, three, one more, a couple more times. last time E minor
So make sure you can do that, downstrokes only, nice smooth switches. And when you're ready, we can take a look at the strumming pattern. There's two in this song that I'd like to use. First one goes like this. And that one is just four downstrokes. But the trick is we're stopping them short. So we play the downstroke and then I use my right hand and I just lightly touch the strings. And I also am using my chord hand and I'm putting my pinky down on the strings. That way I'm really making sure I mute them. You know, I'm doing it in two different ways. So I would practice that by going one and two and three and four and, you know, muting on the ands. And then I would try it a little bit faster, counting out loud to make sure I'm doing it steady. One and two and three and four and. You know, and once you're comfortable at that kind of medium pace, we can speed it up to the actual recording speed. But in order to get there, you got to do it slowly and perfectly. And then, you know, as you, as you get comfortable with it, that's when you can speed it up. And when we're doing this with F and G, for F, we don't have our pinky free. What we do is we just release the pressure. See, I'm not even stopping it with my other hand. I'm just releasing the pressure and the chord stops. But let's do it with both. Just that way we can make sure that it's really going to mute the strings, you know, so. Try it a bunch with that, same way, one and two, and you know, taking your time. And for G, once again, our pinky isn't free to do that muting thing. So what I like to do is I take the pressure off and I go like that, you know, just like with the F chord. So try it with those three shapes. And when you're ready, we're gonna put that together with our progression a couple times, just for some practice. One and two and three, and four and one two three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two three and four and one and two and three and four again So that's the first way you can do it. But another way you can do it, just using a conventional strumming pattern that works really well for the parts of the song where it gets more exciting, like the chorus, it would be like this. I'll do it a little bit slower. Three. And that's a variation of the most common strumming pattern ever. We're just changing a couple things. First, we're starting off with a root strum, which means to just hit the lowest strings. You know, we're just aiming for the lower, bassier end of the guitar. And we're also adding a mute on beat three. Now, before we get too into it, let's figure out the pattern itself. First half, we go root, down, up, root, down, up, three, four. Root, down, up, three, four. Root, down, up, three, four. And the second half, we go mute, up, down, up. So for the mute, we're doing the same thing where we stop the strings on the E minor chord with our pinky. And in this case, my hand hits the guitar first. My pick kind of just grazes the strings. It doesn't have to, you can just go like that. But as long as your pick ends up under the strings, ready for the next upstroke. And then we just go up, down, up. So mute, and if you want, you can graze the strings and create a little percussive sound, optional. And then up, down, up. So try that a couple times. One, two, mute, up, down. To mute up down up. Work on each of those halves, and when you're ready, we'll put it all together on the E minor shape first. Three, four, one, two, mute up down, root down up, mute up down. And F and G, 
since we're muting them just by releasing the pressure, I recommend practicing those a little bit as well. You know, just try it out a little bit. If you practice the previous strumming pattern, the it's a lot easier to do this mute during this strumming pattern. So, you know, you can practice that first and then you'll get used to the whole concept of muting. It'll make this one a lot easier. Either way, we're gonna practice our second strumming pattern with our chord progression now. Starting on E minor, one, two, three, four. So you're welcome to use either of those strumming patterns. I would recommend using the downstrokes only one during the verse and maybe playing the other one during the chorus just to create some separation between the two, some contrast. It's totally up to you. Anyways, now that we have practiced the verse with our strumming, let's take a look at the chorus. The chords are the same, except we're gonna add that D chord finally. And um, let's just practice playing downstrokes only so we can get an idea of the chord order to start with. Starting on E minor, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. G, two, three. Again, E minor, G. One more, E minor, G. E minor, two. Now we're finally going to go. So we just go between E minor and G a couple times, then E minor, D. So let's try it with our second strumming pattern. And remember that mute is optional. You can always just miss the strings on beat three instead. Let's go for it. One, two, three, four, one, down, up, miss. Cool. So there's only one part that we haven't done yet, and that's the intro, and it's really simple. We just play E minor and then F, and we do that six times total. So I would do it with our first strumming pattern going. And that's it, just those three sections. When it comes to putting this tune together, we start out by playing our intro, then we have verse, chorus, verse, chorus, a musical interlude, which is just the chords from the verse, and then the chorus, and then our intro one more time. But I guess it's an outro now because we're using it at the very end of the song. So just take a look at these parts of the song. You could even write this down and then listen to the original recording as you look this over. That way you can learn to see or hear the next parts coming up. You know, that's the first step to being able to play through the entire song is to analyze the form or the order of all the chords. You know, you can listen to the song a million times and that'll obviously do it for you. But if you read it while you're listening to it, that helps so much more. So please give that a try. And now we're gonna play through our own little version of the song. We're gonna play uh, the intro, but it's gonna be a little bit shorter than normal. Then we'll play the verse and the chorus. Here we go. Uh, one, two, three, four. Here we go into the verse.
this. So that's the simple strumming version of London Calling by The Clash. If you're a bit newer to guitar, don't forget that you can simplify that strumming pattern. I put a link down below to a lesson where we go over just that pattern. That's the most common and useful pattern ever. Um, there's also my free ebook if you need any help with building up the foundation, all the chords and strumming that you need to get started. My complete beginner's course, which guides you through that entire process. The chord chart on my Patreon. Other than that, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.